Our gospel lesson for today comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 29. An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. He said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to vindicate himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? The words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And please enjoy this clip of uh, a story about Mr. Rogers. Nearly everyone remembers Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in this But not everyone knows that this cardigan-clad king of children's TV, Fred Rogers, was actually a pioneer who challenged racial stereotypes in media. Enter Francois Clemens. Francois Scarborough Clemens. And his role as Officer Clemens made him one of the first recurring black characters on a children's TV show. When I started, there were two, three shows, period, on television that employed a black character. Francois grew up during the civil rights movement in times of great racial tension in the U.S. So when Fred asked me to be a police officer, Fred, are you sure? Do you know what policemen represent in the community where I was raised? And then he started talking about children needing helpers and the positive influence that I could have for young children. My heart opened as I listened to him. He accepted the role, not knowing he would end up playing Officer Clemens for 30 years. And one of his most memorable scenes is also one of his favorites. There are many ways to say I love you. It's a very big deal for me to be putting my feet in the water with Fred. During a time of segregation, the symbolism wasn't lost on Francois. To say that he uh, didn't know what he was doing or that he accidentally stumbled into integration or talking about racism or sexism. That's not Mr. Rogers. It was well planned and well thought out. And I think it was very impactful. There are many ways to say I love you. That impact was felt by many, but for Francois, it was personal. I was in the studio one day, that particular day, he was filming the end of the show. And when he got to the part, he said, you make every day a special day. You know how? By just your being you. And I swear it was like, just looking right into my eyes. And when the music stopped, I said, Fred, were you talking to me? And he said, yes, I have been talking to you for years, but you heard me today. Over vacation, uh, Sarah and I had some some time to relax and to and to just be. We we played a, a lot of golf uh, and what well, one round a day, and then we were just able to walk or hike and eat and no children, no uh, no responsibilities. It was a little heavenly, uh, I must say, uh, and and. On the trip, I was um, still still thinking about some of the things going on in in life and in our world, and I, I came across a viral video uh, that was of uh, two-term Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker, who I, I've never really followed much, uh, but he he gave a phenomenal uh, commencement speech at Northwestern uh, University in Illinois. Uh, and he used some quotes from the award-winning sitcom, The Office, to impart wisdom to the graduating class. And Steve Carroll, star of The Office, 
uh, was in attendance at the commencement address because his daughter was among the graduates. And the most poignant moment in the speech was shared millions of times across social media, and I think it relates to us, as, especially uh, to the clip about Officer Clemens. And the governor gave a quote from a character on the office, Dwight, who said, whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. And the governor asked, well, that's great, but how do you spot an idiot? And he gave an answer to his own question. He said, the best way to spot an idiot is to look for the person who is cruel. And he said, let me explain. When we see someone who doesn't look like us or sound like us or act like us or love like us or live like us, the first thought that crosses almost everyone's brain is either rooted in judgment or fear. That's evolution, he said. We survived as a species by being suspicious of things that we aren't familiar with. So in order to be kind, we have to shut down that animal instinct and force our brain to travel a different pathway. Empathy and compassion are evolved states of being. They require the mental capacity to step past our most primal urges. Somewhere along the way in the last few years, our society has come to believe that weaponized cruelty is part of some well thought out master plan. Cruelty is seen by some as a way to gain power. Empathy and kindness are considered weak. And many important people look at the vulnerable only as rungs on the ladder to the top. And he said, I'm here to tell you that when someone's path through this world is marked with path with acts of cruelty, they have failed the first test of an advanced society. They never first force their animal brain to evolve past its first instinct. They never forged strong enough new mental pathways to overcome their own instinctual fears. And so their thinking and problem solving lack the imagination and creativity that the kindest people have in spades. Then he said, over my years in politics and business, I have found one thing to be universally true. The kindest person in the room is often the smartest. The kindest person in the room is often the smartest. In our gospel lesson today, when an expert in the law tested Jesus by asking him what he had to do to inherit eternal life, Jesus answered him, as he often did, with a question. What is written in the law? The man replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And when Jesus confirmed his answer, the man probed further and who is my neighbor? This time Jesus answered with a parable. A man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho is taken by robbers, stripped, beaten, and left for dead. A priest traveling along the same road sees the man but passes on the other side. A Levite, later traveling on the road, does the same. But a Samaritan, an unexpected plot tryst given the bitter hostility between the Jews and the Samaritans, the Samaritan took pity on him. The Samaritan tended to the man's wounds, took him to an inn, and cared for him. He paid the innkeeper enough money to keep the man for two months and promised to reimburse the innkeeper for any extra expenses. After telling the story, Jesus asked again, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? And the expert of the law replied, 
the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus said, Go and do likewise. Amy Hollingsworth explains in her book, The Simple Faith of Mr. Rogers, that Jesus made clear that it's less about determining who your neighbor is, who you're supposed to love, according to the biblical, biblical command, and more about establishing yourself as a neighbor by your acts of mercy. Jesus transformed the question, who is my neighbor, into a directive. Be the good neighbor. If there is a central biblical theme to Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, this is it. Be the good neighbor. The television program wasn't named after Mr. Rogers alone, but after his neighborhood. And his definition of neighbor was simple. It is the person you happen to be with at the moment. Whether that person is a Samaritan, a difficult person like someone trying to test you, or the help staff of a restaurant on a busy Father's Day. This is even more the case if the person you happen to be with is in need. Hollingsworth writes that at the center of Mr. Rogers' theology of loving your neighbor was this. Everyone is made in the image of God. And for that reason alone, he or she is to be valued, appreciated, as Mr. Rogers used to say. And he said it in his own words in the television documentary, America's Favorite Neighbor. You know, Mr. Rogers said, I think everyone longs to be loved and longs to know that he or she is lovable. And consequently, the greatest thing that we can do is to help somebody know that they're loved and capable of loving. Rabbi Nakam Breslov shared in a devotional book that we should know this. You should judge every person by merits. Even someone who seems completely wicked or maybe like an idiot. You must search and find that little speck of good. For in that place, they are not wicked. And by this, you will raise them up and return them to the fold of God. And you must also do this for yourself. Find your own good points, one after another, and raise yourself up. This is how melodies are made, note after note. This is how we return to the shepherd as lost sheep. Mr. Rogers said, if you could only sense how important you are to the lives of those you meet, how important you can be to the people you may never dream of meeting, there is something of yourself that you leave at every meeting with another person. Be the good neighbor. Be the good neighbor. In Christ's name, amen.